can we start okay, uh, I hope you know about climate change to some extent and also how it links to development and also to sustainable development how we can uh, use the climate change as a you know positive way of getting into our development process uh, I'm just looking if there are any more to come. This is the number that normally comes. Hmm? Okay, right, then we can start maybe, right? Okay, uh, now in this, I'm trying to tell you or give you some information about climate change. Hmm? What is climate change and why, why it happens, how it happens, the reasons for it, and then the present status, and then the, what are the, uh, the options we have specifically in this country hmm? what is going to happen to you know weather and climate of this country and as engineers as planners as uh, policy makers what steps we should do to overcome problems associated with climate change and of course uh, link to that is the disasters that we are having so how do we um, use this as an opportunity to get into uh, the development process in a sustainable, sustainable path. Okay, so many things are happening in this country now. Maybe you have heard, of, you know, through media, through radio, uh, through various other sources, that uh, things are happening. Like uh, you know, we have the Sustainable Development Goals and Paris Agreement, climate change negotiations, various other things. Probably you have got some idea, right? I'll try to uh, summarize some of these things and also um, what steps as a country, as a uh, government that we are embarking on. Okay? Right, so with that background let me go quickly and uh, talk about these things. Of course, maybe many of you know by now. What is climate? It's different from weather, right? We talk about weather forecast, whether it's day to day things happening, tomorrow what's going to happen, such weather but uh, climate is mean and very good temperature ma ma mainly uh, the atmospheric variables such as temperature precipitation wind and many other things of course uh, over a period of time ranging from months to millions of years uh, under the uh, definition proper definition by world meteorological organization wmo they say if you want to talk about a climate you have to have uh, a records or data spanning at least for a 30 year period. So if it is less than that, it's difficult to talk about climate. Right? So 30 years. So when I say months, more than that. Yeah? So minimum of 30 years. Say Colombo temperature, for example, you won't talk the on a, on a climate wise. You have to take 30 years of temperature data in this place you know talk about climate okay all right then associated with that the climate change we have the climate then what is climate change now uh, you all can define or many people define in different ways but uh, let's uh, think of a, a proper definition now uh, unf triple c this is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Okay. It has a definition. Okay. Now, maybe you will agree or some may not agree. Change of climate, which is attributed, I highlighted directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of the global atmosphere and which is an addition to natural climate variability observed over a comparable time period. Okay, so now we, when we talk about climate change, really we are focusing on the attributes that make due to uh, human intervention, anthropogenic activities. Okay, so that's how we define. So that, that tells you that there's a natural variability, but we are really focusing on the variability that comes through human intervention. Okay. You will see why I am saying this. 
Okay, so then very briefly to tell you the Earth's climate is governed by these factors. Of course, if you take a, as a system, uh, Earth atmosphere system, there are external factors affecting that system. Those are solar input output, right? If it varies, the energy getting into the atmospheric system varies and therefore the climate will vary, right? Then of course, uh, we know if you say that the, the main source of energy that drives this system is the solar energy, right? That's the primary source, right? So, of course, within the system also there may be changes, but we are talking about the externality here. So, the earth sun geometry will influence the earth climate and also dust coming in between, like say you have the solar sun's energy coming through, but earth is here, in between there can be ob obstacles like dust clouds and things like that, that also will influence the, the amount of energy coming into the system and therefore that will alter the climate. And then within the system we have volcanic eruptions, uh, mountain building, continental drifts, then atmospheric chemistry that we were talking about composition of the uh, atmosphere, the, the amounts of gases in the atmosphere, the, the amounts, uh, you know, new things coming into the atmosphere, those things. Then the uh, reflectivity, atmosphere reflects some of the energy out, clouds maybe, and also surface reflectivity, the surface, right, reflects back some of this energy, uh, like uh, you know, when, we snow, when you have a snow cover, fresh snow is different from old snow and forest cover is different from tarred surfaces, concrete surfaces, that type of thing. If you change those, the climate can change, right? And then, of course, the, uh, the main, most important thing is the atmosphere, ocean, heat exchange, okay? So, we have the oceans, uh, if you take the surface of the earth, two-thirds ocean, right? Especially tropical ocean, right? So, the, the ocean is considered to be his storage, like battery storage, okay? You get and it's stored, right? And then the energy is transferred from the ocean to the atmosphere, most of that. So, really, the, even though we say the, the ocean, the sun is the main driver, atmosphere, you may not believe this, atmosphere gets its energy mainly from the ocean, mainly from the surface bottom from bottom. Why I am saying that? The energy that is coming from the sun goes straight away to the surface of the world, right? And then atmos atmosphere transparent for solar radiation. So the atmosphere gets its energy from the bottom. So that is very important, then it changes very important. So we consider the ocean, atmosphere and land everything as a, as a unit or a system, okay? So, the, the earth system, earth climate can change the internal factors also. The amount of uh, volcanic eruptions will determine the you know, amount of energy getting into that. So a lot of energy comes from the, the, the bottom or the, from the earth, right? And with that, we get all the dust, material, gases, water vapor, many things comes into that. Also. So, therefore, uh, the, it's a complex system, right? Okay. Then, now, of course, as I said, the, the natural sources are there, natural effects, solar cycle, solar output and, you know, change the atmospheric uh, uh, climate, atmospheric climate, orbit, tilt of the axis, volcanic eruption, those are natural things. Then apart from that, we have the man-made components, anthropogenic, greenhouse gas is the main thing. We have, I have put some uh, gases here. Now, I will be talking about the Kyoto Protocol. Now, there is something called Kyoto basket of gases, there are only six gases there, some of them are here, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, CFC, PFCs, etc. Those, those six things are in the Kyoto basket, we will come to that later, but many of these things, this is not com a complete list, there are others, right? they, these are main things, okay. Then, uh, so they, they uh, has a greater influence on the climate. Then the, uh, so if you change the uh, amount of these gases in the atmosphere, you change the, uh, the climate. Then of course burning fossil fuel, changing land use, land use pattern maybe, 
uh, say if you have a big forest and you clear the forest that will affect the climate, raising livestock, okay, urbanization. I think it's understandable, right? Now, uh, we here when you talk about greenhouse gases, we focus on carbon dioxide as the main gas. So, carbon dioxide concentration has increased tremendously uh, from about 280 parts per million mm, in the pre industrial era to about now 400 right, parts per million. And the forecast or the projections are that you know by 2000, end of the century, it can go up to about four, between 540 and 970. There is a very important factor here why we talk about this carbon dioxide amounts in the atmosphere. Uh, I'll be talking about the Paris Agreement and things like that. You must have heard about it. We talk about the capping the increase of Earth's temperature at 2 degree. Raising or rising temperature should be below 2 degree compared to pre-industrial, right? Now, uh, if you want, so I will show you that it, the temperature rise is directly linked with the amount of greenhouse gases, mainly carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, estimates are these. If you want to limit the temperature rise to 2 degrees Celsius, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere should be not more than 450 parts per million. Okay. So, the, at this rate, it's going to go up above 450. And in the Paris Agreement, there's something to the effect that we will try our best to keep it at 1.5. Price by 1, at 1.5 degrees Celsius. That's part of the, the agreement. So, if you want to have that level, the concentration should be 350 parts per million. We have gone above that now, right? So then we will have to reduce, we will have to take from the atmosphere some of them in order to come to that level. Okay, I do not know how we can do it, but that is that's the situation. Okay. Now, so if you do not do this uh, on a normal circumstances, the uh, latest is the global average temperature will exceed uh, or rise at least 1.4 to 5.8 degrees. So, this is a very rough figure, but it will be more, more than this sometimes. But 1.4 is, is not, you know, even now with the current it will go beyond that. Okay. So, and also now along with that, we know we talked about sea level rise. Uh, measurement shows that uh, during 1860 to 2000, the sea level has gone up by 10 to 20 uh, centimeters. But, you know, with this temperature rise, it can go to about 9 to 88 centimeters, that is the estimate. So, if you take a average value of about half a meter, you go about half a meter to the turn of the century. Now, main, as I said, main influence is uh, due to carbon dioxide increase. This is, these are estimates of IPCC. I will talk about that also, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. I will show you how it was initiated, what it is doing. That is the main authority in a way uh, about the climate change projections. Okay. So, we associate with this, there are other environmental issues. Climate change is influenced by many other things and also climate change influences other things, right? Now, Stratospheric coast ozone layer, we know uh, it is way above the, uh, in the middle atmosphere, uh, in the stratosphere, maybe 30 to 35 kilometers or so from the surface. So, uh, even above the layer where the supersonic jets apply, way above that, right? So, if you damage this layer, there can be, uh, you know, repercussions of the amount of energy coming because this is shielding some of the harmful high energy radiation from the sun coming to the surface. This is a, this is like a 
shield that we have. But if you damage that, everything will come down, right? Then that will influence the climate because the temperature will go up definitely, and then it will have other repercussions. Then the air quality, as I said before, and also the climate change also will influence the biodiversity, okay? and biodiversity change will also influence the climate, right? The forestry, desertification or something like that. If you know man influence will go towards the desertification of this country, this uh, world, then that will influence the climate. Then mainly the water plays a major role in this process. Now, uh, uh, maybe uh, I should tell you this. I have been doing this lecture for some time now, uh, maybe two years ago or so. Some somebody like you has put me a you know email or Gmail, but it has gone to spam. I yesterday I saw it. <laughs> it's so sorry that it might be about uh, two years ago, right? It was in the spam list. So he the, he had a question: How the water influences the climate change? How what is the role of water in the the, the climate change scenario? Hopefully you can grab this through my lecture when I talk about it. I am not going to specifically say this, 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 this. He wanted uh, an answer for that from me. But I am sorry, I don't know who he is now. Anyway, he has, must have done the exam. Anyway, so I would say the water plays a major role. Water cycle change includes the atmosphere. Water has a bigger role to play. And also, water is a, you know, in a way, a heat trapping gas, water vapor. More than the carbon dioxide, very influence. So if you have more water vapor in the atmosphere, the it will act as a greenhouse. Okay? And many other things. As we go through, you will find the, the water's role in the climate. Okay. Alright. Now this is about the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's the scientific intergovernmental body tasked to evaluate the risk of climate change caused by human activity. Okay, so that's the intergovernmental panel. This has, uh, you know, scientists from all over the world, oh, about three to four thousand. Right? They are working. These scientists are working in their research fields, and then they, they come together and you know put up a uh, uh, you know uh, communicate regular intervals. Okay, this was established in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization and the UNEP, United Nations UNEP program. This was so fairly old institute, they are doing their work. And if you remember right, uh, the no, one time the IPCC shared the Nobel Prize with uh, Al Gore, US Vice President. You remember that? I don't know, general knowledge, okay. Some time back, Nobel Prize was won by this institute and the, the uh, Alco. Okay. Right. Now, this is uh, just to show you how the natural variability and the uh, human influence has changed the atmosphere, the change, the climate. Now, we, there are three. You know, now, the green one and the bottom one here is the uh, predicted natural changes that have been there. And then, of course, observation is black line. Then the predictors, uh, sum of natural and anthropogenic changes. Now I put this to show you. It, it is if you don't have the human influence, anthropogenic component, really this temperature increase will not go in that direction. It's going down in a way, right? So very clearly the observed one matches with the uh, combination of natural and Anthropogenic, the red and uh, the black, but the, the green is the natural variability. So it's not playing any role. So our man is the, the man is influenced the climate change. Okay. So therefore, the IPCC definition is because of this. We are looking at only the human influence because other uh, natural variability is negligible in this sense, right? Okay. So it's justified. IPCC, the UNFCCC definition, I showed you before, is justified by looking at this. Okay. Right. 
this you all have seen i am sure you have seen i just put this to show you that the carbon dioxide is increasing rapidly in the atmosphere okay, it's going up and up now 390 here but i said uh, it's 400 now right and uh, this annual cycle is very important you can see that the from spring to summer time the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere decreasing during winter time it goes up why mainly because the forest the leaves absorb carbon dioxide for its growth so spring summer time trees grow not here temperate zones in the high latitudes so that has an influence on the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so this shows that if you have a bigger forest areas the temperature will go down carbon dioxide amount will go down thereby the temperature rise will stop so it's a, a remedial measure to if you want to decrease uh, temperature and the climate change compared to climate change okay right so not only that all the other gases the greenhouse gases are increasing this is now main three gases carbon dioxide nitrous oxide and methane now even though we talk about uh, carbon dioxide other gases are more powerful they are powerful greenhouse gases as compared to carbon dioxide hmm? now this i will take some time to explain this some gases now you have h2o carbon dioxide ozone uh, nitrous oxide methane these are we know these are gray, uh, greenhouse gases now this shows the here on the axis x axis we have the wavelengths of radiation okay from the sun sun's spectrum okay from short wave to long wave and these panels 0 1 0 1 means absorption 0 means no absorption, one means 100% absorption. So these are absorptive curves for different gases in the atmosphere. Now if you look closely, there is one that is ozone absorbing, that is the one to third panel, 100% in the short wave range. Short wave meaning gamma rays, X rays, UV rays ultraviolet rays, X-rays, gamma rays, all these things are com you know, coming from the sun. Beyond that, as you go towards the, the longer wavelength, we have the visible light, visible range, then we have infrared and the other radio waves, long waves. Right? Now, you can see here the character of each of these gases. Now, I am talking about the ozone here, is absorbed 100% in the short wave range and the you know, it is transparent or it will not absorb light and some of the other things not absorbed, right? But at the end, far end, again, long waves also absorb. There is a peak here. Then if you take the, let's take carbon dioxide, for example, we are talking about it. Now, it absorbs in the longer wave range, beyond visible, infrared, right? range it, it has several peaks 100 percent absorption at certain wavelengths other places it won't absorb then h2 i was talking about h2 also absorbs at many places you see peaks are there right methane is also having two peaks there now if you put all together we have the atmosphere down the one that gives you the the result of combination of all this right we can see that there are some windows. Definitely, the biggest window is the uh, light or the visible range. Okay, from the wavelength, we can identify the 0.3 micro these micro uh, uh, waves, uh, and uh, from 0.3 to 0.7 or so. That is the, the the visible range. So we can say very clearly. Atmosphere is transparent for light. Okay? That is essential thing because that's the one that we need and not harmful. And then uh, it's used by trees to grow, our warmth, 
to see something, all that is there. So that's nature has created this way, and we are fine here. Now, as also we go towards this, so there are some other windows. The windows are there. These windows are important to us. To see something, you have to open the window, no? otherwise you cannot see anything. Now, now we have technology, maybe satellite technology, all that. You know, you have, you know, telecommunication, where well, all that is done through these windows. That wavelength can be used to do that. If you don't have a window, this, you know, wave, you know, radiation cannot go. Nothing will be seen, right? So these are very important windows. So the, the instruments or the gadgets, the satellite, um, all that is, you know, focusing on these windows to get information. You want to get the earth information, uh, some some signal has to go. No, that signal goes through this window to that place. Then you know, to the the, the instrument up there. Then you can get the the, the required information. If you close this, you cannot do that. Right? You want to be able to see uh, you know cricket matches from other countries. You don't have satellite technology, right? The satellite technology is working with these uh, windows. Right? Okay. News is same thing. Right? So, globe has come closer because of these windows, right? But what is happening now? If you increase these gases and put additional things which are not here, man-made gases are also there, like CFCs, synthetic gases are there in the atmosphere. They are powerful greenhouse gases and these things, right? I'll show one or two things. Here we have some of the things. Now, this is the window. So the, the main window here, must be window, that is the one towards this side. You see in the middle there is a peak, but there is a window, right? If you look at that window, this is what it is. Now these other gases like CFCs, uh, ozone and many other things are also absorbing at the window, right? While increasing the uh, you know, temperature by trapping energy, by absorbing these things, it also closes the window. Okay? So, uh, those are uh, you know, additional problems of this, right? So, if you increase the synthetic gases more, other gases can, you know, somebody produce, you will close the windows and increase the uh, temperature of the earth and also the climate change will uh, be due to that, okay? Uh, so, that this is what it is. Then, looking at this, now, this is the uh, carbon dioxide emissions from different countries, right? 1990 values are here. There's a reason for putting 1990. In uh, Kyoto Protocol, we we took 1990 as the base year to calculate these things and you know give quotas to those countries. Now, for example, you can see who are the, the, the countries putting more into the atmosphere. USA is putting about 36%, EU 22%, uh, 24%, Russia 17%, hmm? and then Japan 8.0% or so on. Right? Actually, Kyoto Protocol was based on this, this values. Right? They are responsible were given to these countries because of this. Right? So, these are the contributors. When you say Annex 1, they are developed countries. Under the protocol, we label this as, this as Annex 1 countries. So, they are, uh, you know, they are bound to do something under the protocol. Okay? Okay. Now, when you take the uh, sectorial which sectors these carbon dioxide and other greenhouses are coming from, main thing is from fuel combustion. 63 percent comes carbon dioxide is from the fossil fuel burning. That's why I put at the first slide, these are the main thing. Then of course the land use practices, you cut down the forest trees and then uh, uh, you change the landscape, then it, it leads to more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. To burn maybe, and then uh, you and also you reduce the absorptive power. Okay. Sinks are reduced, right? Okay, then all the other things are there: waste, then agriculture, mechanical agriculture. In other words, using uh, inorganic fertilizer. Okay, and of course uh, methane from agriculture, swamps, mud, you know, flooding the paddy fields lead to this, right? Uh, many other things are there, okay? This gave you an indication how it is happening. Okay, so 
world carbon emission what are the, the sectors we take the sectors this is how it is distributed energy supply is the main sector then we have industry we have transport we have agriculture taking fair share so this is how the carbon dioxide coming into the atmosphere through anthropogenic means man made all right so even in this country if you put a pie like this it comes mainly from transport then the next is energy generation uh, waste industries those are the main things will come up so if you are thinking of reducing carbon dioxide or try to overcome the climate change then we have to focus on those areas how to reduce emission from those sectors okay. just to give you this also ipc is giving this i mean they are estimates if you take carbon dioxide as you know warming potential in other words the it, it you know carbon dioxide is one its ability to warm the atmosphere one right methane is about 25 one time powerful than carbon dioxide nitrous oxide 310 times so even though we talk about carbon dioxide other gases are more powerful only reason that we are talking about carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide equivalent is mainly because the volume wise carbon dioxide is more other things are less than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere even though they are far now look at this synthetic gases cfc 12 hfc 22 hf hfc 134a those are all man made synthetic gases right you all know about it i hope if you are into refrigeration and air conditioning you will know this right they are very powerful greenhouse gases in other words uh, cfc 12 now no longer available maybe you know that we whole world faced out this no manufacturing no use they are all faced out taken out right no manufacturing in the world but it was 8100 times powerful than carbon dioxide so if you have one molecule of this it is like having 8100 uh, molecules of carbon dioxide so that's why it was taken out but unfortunately it was replaced if you know what are the gas used to replace cfc any of you who are in in that area as engineers refrigeration in the srk mechanical engineers he used really hfc right hfc 134a you in your automobile even even now maybe some of you are using 134 in your cars as a if you have the air conditioning in the car most probably it's 134a right but that's that's this much probable anyway those are you know different story anyway in this country we are also now hf 134a is being replaced with uh, natural gas like 600a and all they are dotized in the refrigerators and all so it's a natural gas being used instead of this right uh, because i i tell they because i was head in that unit for 10 years i did most of the work in this country on these things now 22 hcfc 22 even this air conditioning is i'm sure running on hcfc 22 right it has to be based out in time to come under the monitor it's coming now so we have to find another replacement for that okay it is still be there uh, most of the air condition in this country is uh, with 22 as refrigerant okay all right so it will come okay so if you want to know where these gases are coming from what industries are there where the main thing comes say for example carbon dioxide coming from fossil fuel combustion land use conversion cement production these are the main thing, right methane comes from fossil fuel rice paddies that is you flood the rice paddies then uh, waste dump livestock so likewise you can see and uh, if you take the third column the amount in the atmosphere you see zeros in the synthetic gases at that time pre industrial but they are also increasing right so that's why i say they are on man made through industrial processes okay so therefore everything is increasing and they are uh, how they are say the 22 liquid coolant right 12 liquid coolant forms 
right? Those are the areas they are using, sources, right? So, if you want to reduce climate change, the temperature increase, we have to get rid of these things, or at least reduce usage, find alternative things, okay? Things are being done, right? Okay. Now, I have been telling you now, the main, main areas that the human activity is causing this is deforestation, burning of fossil fuel. Of course, the population growth also leads to this, right? More of, you know, you need to clear land to have houses, right? And infrastructure, roads, so that will lead to more of the destruction and then uh, lead to climate change also, right? So you'll have to have innovation method as engineers, you'll have to think about these things. These are problems, these are factors I'm doing. Let's talk about uh, the things that we can do, right? Okay, now this is again the emission, hmm? the countries who are responsible. I put a pie chart on this, right? Just to compare Sri Lanka uh, with this, the 1990 uh, uh, and 2004 values are here. You see, now this is per capita emission of each country. One person in USA, and one person in Sri Lanka, how much carbon dioxide is emitting through their, you know, carbon footprint, for example. Amount of carbon dioxide you, you put out, right? So, if you take this, you can compare, it's like uh, one US citizen is equal to about 200 Sri Lankans, right? Compare here. So, that's the disparity. That more industrial countries are putting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere because of their lifestyle, okay. They may be using more energy hmm, for their comfort, right. They may be more energy for their industry, right, food processing, many other things. So this is how it is happening, right. So if you want to reduce temperature rise, mainly the industrial countries should take action to reduce their carbon footprint. Right. Okay. So there is a direct link with the uh, temperature rise and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. One to one correlation here you can see. Carbon dioxide goes up, temperature goes up. Right. Okay. Then this is a prediction post uh, IPCC and others. This is why I said is 1.4 to 5.8 degree Celsius increase by turn of the century. How it is happening given all these lines are different models, model outputs. The main thing here is that all the outputs models are giving a rise. Nobody says it stays long or reduced. So if you take the average, it's about maybe 3 to 4 degrees rise and be expected if you go like this. right? Now, the inputs are from 2000 or beyond. This is like business as usual scenario. This is what you do have. Right? Okay, so with the temperature rise, the warming temperature has resulted in melting ice caps. You have seen in videos, various other places. And then, of course, loss of glaciers, snow directly causes landslides. In, you know, we have um, real, you know, information from say Nepal and those countries really. Uh, flash floods, glaciers, lake overflow, various enough water inflow in rivers. How do you, the, how these things are connected? Because uh, lakes outbreaks is known, well known, because it melts and the lakes cannot hold that much water, then it breaks, flash flood comes, landslide comes with that. And then, of course, the, the variation of uh, water flow in the rivers, how that happens. If you take our neighbor, India, for example, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, their river water is fed from melting snow from Himalayas, right? That's the source of water for the rivers, right? What happens? The temperature goes, the, the melting is higher. And then more water will come, the flooding will occur, right? And then what happens after some time? You don't have that, you know, that amount of melting, if you because you don't have that many um, snow in the, you know, in time, 
then the, the river flow will be reduced. Less water will be there in the rivers. And that will lead to many other things. Power generation, agriculture, uh, many other things happen with that. So th these are interlinked problems. Okay? All right, so sea level rise is a problem, especially island nation like ours is going to be a problem. So uh, melting of ice and also uh, ocean, the water coming into the ocean will be higher. And then warm will also increase the due to expansion, the level will increase, volume will increase. And therefore, we have observed now that sea level is rising throughout the world, but influence is mainly on island stations. Now, this is uh, observed plus projected Northern Hemisphere snow or ice extent. So, up to 2000, there were this mount uh, square kilometers, 10 to the 6, right? And the prediction is that you know it's going to go down like this by 2050, most probably everything will be melted, right? Depending on these different scenarios, right? So, all the ice and the snow melts and get into the ocean and the temperature, uh, the level will rise. So, what will happen? There are many things that will happen, right? especially the islands will be inundated, some of the islands will be you know, gone forever right? <coughs> because of the rise and you know, enormous uh, variations will occur in the, in the world and that will influence the weather of course. Right, right. Now this is the sea level uh, predictions or the projections. This is how it's going to be. So from this we can see. I gave you the, uh, the the values, observed values before, right? According to this, at least half a meter rise. If you take the average or the mean, this is going from about uh, point uh, two and a half to about one meter. So middle maybe half a meter, right? By two thousand one hundred. Right? That's how it is predicted. Now this is very important. Few slides are here. Northern hemisphere spring snow cover going down. Arctic summer sea extent going down drastically. Second one. Then global average sea level is going up and up. Most importantly the right hand corner top is very important when you talk about climate change because the global upper ocean heat content amount of heat in the ocean is going to increase. Now that will lead to many weather conditions. The, this is one factor to generate cyclones. Right? High the oceanic temperature, the disturbance will initiate and become a cyclone. So more cyclone, more frequent cyclone and bigger cyclone, severe cyclone can come with this in time to come. Okay? So this is the picture of the oceanic scene because ocean is very important that controls the climate, especially for island nations. Why I say that? Because all around the island we have water, water modulate the weather over an island. That is why if you go to Canada it is very cold, no? but if you go to England which is further north, it is not that cold. Right? You have noticed that? Because the ocean modifies the condition in those areas. Right? Okay, one factor. Right. So therefore, ocean plays a bigger role in change the climate. Right. So some predictions, let us come to our region now. This is the global uh, prediction of precipitation, rainfall. Okay? Take the tropical belt and you know we can see our country, right? You can notice right here if you don't know, it's that here, right? Now these two uh, panels are December, January, February. If you talk local terms, north is monsoon time, right? We are talking about rainfall. So December, January, February, Sri Lanka gets its rainfall mainly from northeast monsoon right so this is like uh, northeast monsoon period for for the northern hemisphere is a winter right and down here is 
June, July, August, summer, right? And here, Sri Lanka gets its rainfall from what is the weather pattern? Southwest monsoon. Okay, so northeast monsoon and southwest monsoon. Now, what does this say? Now, during northeast monsoon, according to this, if you look at the color code, it is going to be minus 10, right? Around minus 10 towards negative side. No. You take the summer, southwest monsoon is more towards blue or the green side, plus 10 no more. Right? So, what does that mean? With the climate change, in time to come, our northeast monsoon will fail. Less rain will be there during the northeast monsoon. More rain will be there, excessive rain will be there during the southwest monsoon. So, what area? <coughs> southwest sector will have more rain. We have been receiving that recently. If you, if you remember right now, we had flooding, we have landslide. We are in the southwest part of the country. Whereas, even today, if you go to the northeast, right? very dry. So, two patterns, drought condition in the northeast and flooding condition in the southwest. Basically, it tallies with this projection. So, we can expect the similar thing ha to happen in time to come. This is a projection. Okay? So, it is not so good for us. It would have better if the other way around. Right? Why? Because the north is, say, Monragala, uh, uh, Polon Naru, Anuradhapura, Trinko, Jaffna, sorry. You get more rain, our agriculture will be boom, right? Most of our paddy, Ampara, various other, they are coming from that area, not from the southwest, no. So, you know, if you have more rain there, it is beneficial to us, okay? More rain here, is losing out okay because of the flooding land size with other things right okay so it's not good the future is not so good okay we have done something in this country and we are we found the same thing so according to modeling here we find that the north is or the dry zone we call is going to be drier and the wet zone is going to be wetter okay this is what Okay. Now, now as engineers, planners, we need to take into consideration this particular thing. You cannot just leave it as it is. Now, what can we do? Right? So, I hope the picture is clear for you. With the climate change, we are getting into a situation where things will be difficult for us. Of course, there have been uh, now uh, three Sometimes we fail in the agriculture side, no, ready? Khanna tunak, vinasai. How much? It's gone down to about 40% less than what we have in average, right? You have seen this. Huh? People are suffering even today, right? So this is the situation. So what do you do? Now, the impacts due to that, prolonged doubts, of course, we, we receive severe and frequent cyclones sometimes, it's, it's going to come. High intense rainfall, we have observed that. High intense rainfall, you understand what it means. In a short time, we get a downfall, right? And flooding, right? It's not continuous rain. Those are very severe downfall, high intensity showers, right? You know the difference between shower and rainfall, no? Not the shower that you take. In, in terminology, we talk about rain and shower. Okay, monsoon rain, thunder showers. We don't say thunder rain, it's thunder showers, right? We talk of monsoon rain, right? So there's a difference. Huh? There is no time to talk about those things, right? Anyway, then flooding and so on, those are problems, physical impacts in the country, right? And world. So, uh, on a global sense, of course, the impacts has direct influence on lives of people in the developing world. 
including us. Influence is mainly on the tropical belt, right? So we are also faced with that. We are a developing country. So if you take the second bullet here, it gives you developing countries they are over nine tenth of the climate change burden. Ninety-eight percent of the of the seriously affected people and ninety-nine percent of all deaths from weather-related disasters, along with the ninety percent of the total economic losses are in the uh, in, with the uh, developing world. Okay, there are reasons for that. Okay, situation is one thing, economy is another thing, and the know-how is another thing, technology is another thing. That's how we we have all this. So the we also have something called least developing countries now. Are we a least developing country or not? Hmm? No, no. We are little above that, right? So there are advantages and disadvantages being in that group also. <laughs> I, I will talk about it if you have time. All right. So le 50 least developed countries contribute less than one percent of. The global climate carbon emission. We saw that Bangladesh, other countries are emitting even less than us per capita emission. You saw that list, right? So contribution is less than one percent, but ninety-nine percent brunt is on them. This is another problem globally. So these are problems. I put some photos, right? Left, you know. Let's come into our country here, right? What are the? We are an island nation. Uh, we are vulnerable to climate change. Right, and then the problems associated with that is these are things are temperature will rise, and that has influenced many many ways. Okay, our air condition, our energy bill will go up, fans will have to work during night even now. Right, March will be higher, you know, hotter. Right, and then uh, agriculture is suffering. Right, temperature rise means you drying effect is high. So uh, and the sea level rise. I'll show you a picture what is going to happen. Droughts is also persisting. I see rainfall worse there before. Now it will come in two weeks' time. We are going to run rain, right? Uh, and activity. So mainly number six, food supply. Agriculture is affected. Hmm? Fishery, freshwater supply. It's also another thing. I want to talk little detail on these things because we want to do something. Then loss of biodiversity. We are a biodiversity hotspot. We all know that. That it will lost means problem. Then the health is mosquito breeding, various other things associated with humidity and the temperature rise. Okay, so um, dengue, various other things will increase. So with, with time, it has happened, right? Therefore, uh, for us, we see agriculture, uh, water resources, and health, human health, are the sectors. Are most affected, and we have to focus on these things in you know, order to overcome some of these things due to climate change. Okay, I hope you agree with me. Hmm? Right. This is the picture of the uh, Sri Lanka. Now, this this red area. What will happen with the increase of? Uh, I mean, the sea level rise. This red area will be inundated or underwater. So, our shape of our Country will be different in time to come with this, right? Of course, there are other things, you know, coastal erosion is taking place, right? And with that, of course, uh, shape of the country will be different, right? The head will be gone, I think, right? We are really fighting for that head, mm -hmm. and while we are fighting, it is going to go, you know, naturally, it is going to destroy, you know, you know, go go away, right? Okay, so I put some things here. It has a long coastline, right? Therefore, affected. Uh, then also the population mostly in the in that belt due to various reasons of course right there are, there are uh, you know activities are in those areas mainly right and then of course uh, tourism is in this area uh, and then that will be affected uh, ports fisheries fishery harbors and of course uh, roads and uh, railways like see main railway lines are very close to the ocean now you can see the due to erosion is is uh, you know breaking down like plus if you raise the, the water level sea surface uh, sea level is going to be a problem with time to come so therefore we have to spend on you know repairing or moving right things 
Now, if that is the case in the South Western Quarter, we may have to move our rail line further, further inland, right? With enormous cost, right? And then many other things, of course, uh, infrastructure. I'm saying road and rail infrastructure, and the, the our virus will be affected. Coral reef will be gone because the temperature rise. Lagoons, mangroves will dry, and many other things will happen. And then I have summarized here: highly populated and urbanized coastal zone of Sri Lanka, mainly western, southern, and northwestern that area. Of course, the eastern side also now, right? Um, Directly impact with climate change scenarios caused by sea level rise and increased precipitation. So that's something that we foresee happening in this country. Okay, some things signs are there already. Okay, now these are the things that I want you to think. National problems. I put something. Here. Okay, you have to put your heads up for the future, right? Maybe our time is gone, but you all are, have to live in this country. <laughs> if, you, if you prefer to live, right, make this country a better place to live. Now, water management, I see this as a main problem in this country, right? Sustainable use, because we have floods and droughts, right? Now, I would say we have a rainfall pattern or rainfall which has not changed. Annual rainfall amount has not changed, even though that this with this climate change. We have seen annually certain amount of rainfall is received. but the time, the intensity changed okay? and the, the spatial also changed, where it puts the rain is also changed. That is why we fail to uh, cultivate some of the, our lands. Right. Now we have annual rain on uh, about 900 millimeters in the dry areas and about 5000 millimeters of wet area like you know hill country. Uh, whatever and all, we get over 5,000 5, 5, millimeters of rain per an, per an, annually, right? But if you look at the global average, now our average is about 1,900, on the average 1,900 and average rainfall. But global average is 750. So we are above average rainfall we receive. In the, now, if you are having this amount, the, it's not change, not change, if you can have a, if you can you know develop a device to manage what we have received in a proper sense, then we can be benefited, right? Now I give you one example. China, we must have read this in papers also. It came. Now they are building sponge cities. Sponge cities. In other words, they retain seventy percent of the rainwater in 80 percent of urban areas. They are planning to have it by 2020 this completed, big big project. Right? What happens here in this country, so the megapolis has to take into account, what happens we, because why we are having flooding this way, mainly because our retention is low, right. We have filled our you know wetlands maybe and then we build things and we build roads, right. No proper planning on that. So, we need to have retention water and that has other benefits, okay. So now looking at this on a mechanical sense, we are, we are proposing something, you need to think this way. Now what is the problem now, we are having more rain in the southwestern part, Kalani, uh, then Kalu then other rivers are bloody, right? While on the other side, Hamantota, Putlam, Springport, Jaffna, dry. Now, uh, our ancestors in the dry zone, our kings, ancient times, they had a system, no? they, they kept, they retained the rain water in a sophisticated manner. That is why even Rajarata, hmm, Dahasa Kwev, right? So the, the tanks, big tanks, they made because of this, right? Then we, they had a cascade system, Kulu well system. Maybe you have seen, heard 
but we have to dig into that and see. Especially main, mainly engineers. These are engineering work. Okay. Now we are thinking, we are planning, hopefully we can do it. How about diverting water from the southwest water, excess water, to the northeastern side? How to do it? If you think you can do it. Now we are hoping, we are planning, we are proposing that we take this water through pipes. Okay. Say Kalani, little you know, before it comes to Colombo, somewhere up, we have small places. From there, we put a pipe and through gravity we transfer that port, maybe to Wyambo. Right? We cannot have canals, we cannot have tunnels. They are problems. You know, no? putting tunnels is a problem, costly, all that. Hmm? A disaster for the environment also. And putting a canal is also a problem. But in an environmental plan manner, you can put a pipes, big pipes, and through gravity you take water there. Now, if it you know comes down, then gravity cannot be used, then you pump it up through maybe use solar energy, right? Raise the water and through those pipes take to the required area. Now Kalani. You can do that too. If you go to Nilwala and you know Kalu, take that water the similar way to maybe Hamadata over that area. Is it dry? Right? So it can be done. If you can take oil from one country to another country through pipes, huh? gas if you can take, dangerous, right? The water, no danger at all. So in a environment manner. You can do it. This is a vision that we have. Hopefully, we can have that process in time to come. Government is very keen, president is very keen. We are putting up something, and a young engineers will have to think about it. Your input is most valuable in a situation like that. Maybe you are in that field or you know, contribute, right? That's what I mean by diversion. Okay? So, if you have the same amount of rainfall or amount of water, distribution is a problem. So you you make some you know innovative ways to distribute this water, manage it, and have some cascade systems also on the way. And maybe you can also generate electricity to some places. Right? That electricity can be used to pump water and you know take it further. Right? So it has to be coordinated uh, overall well-planned system and that water can be used for agriculture uh, and various other needed sectors right this is a fresh idea i am putting forward right but you know if you have some idea you feed in on us right i am i am in that process okay we are we are working on those things right if, if you know if you think that's as a you know useless idea you put forward, you tell me. That is also okay, right? We want innovative methods from youngsters like you, right? Young engineers. Alright? So this is one way that we think the problem can be tackled. It's a win-win situations there. We read we, we we provide the water for necessary areas while reducing the agony here, flooding and landslides and all the other disastrous situation in this part of the country. Right? Hopefully you can do it. Hmm? Okay? This is put for thought for you all. Right? Okay. Then land and soil in this country. Okay? We are depleting our watersheds, right? And then deforestation is taking place. Soil erosion is taking place. Now stock soil is going out. Always you can see, you know, maybe 30, 40 years ago, if you go to, I was living in, you know, I have studied in Peridhiya, the Mahavali Ganga, Mahavali rivers, very nicely, crystal clear water. Even any day you go up there now, muddy water. Have you noticed that? Right? Always muddy, whether rain or not, it's muddy water. I don't know how, right? So, we are losing our soil day by day, and then some of these things 
goes and you know into our tanks that we have made siltation of the, our water bodies tanks and the, the amount that we can retain is less and less right so those are real problems we have now why is the erosion because we clean we clear the area upper watershed areas are clear you know forests are being cleared for cultivation maybe but bare soil washes off right then we need fertilizer because you know soil is not fertile right then what you create you pollute the land you pollute the water and it creates health problems right even the vegetable that you eat now if you go and see right nuralia and all how much fertilizer they put how much uh, pesticide and insecticide they put right it directly or indirectly it affects your whole uh, country uh, medical sense health wise okay right then of course siltation i have talked about uh, fertility as you know then pollution is also a problem so really we need to restore our watersheds right not only in the hill country when you say watersheds yes there are you know our hill country all with mana now if you put you know trees there it will retain water our rainfall pattern will change and then on top of that now you see even yesterday there was a big fire there mana and then the fire and the rain, if the rain comes the wash off the all the fertile soil and the rocky mountain will be there right so disaster situation for the country right so therefore we need to restore those things and uh, so the water table will go up and we we'll have enough water retention in the in the catchment areas and our our rivers will be fed with enough water right so when you say now we may be talk about in your fields you may be talking about rain water harvesting you have heard about it now how do you you want to have a tank or something to collect the rain water and use it but i am talking about the rain water harvesting of the whole country big way right that means you retain not in a in a tank in your on top of your roof but on the in you know, on the land maybe tanks right maybe uh, in the watershed areas maybe in 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 the uh, cascade uh, small tanks that will feed that will raise the the water table lide water tikak vadi venu right all that has to be taken as a wholesome big picture water retention that's why our kings have said no we should not send any drop of water without using same thing right so we need to really think you know in a in a big way on this problem right now you all have to think beyond this i'm just giving you some ideas right okay then really yeah yeah what happened to our yeah look at our transport system right then energy generation mining our agriculture using these various uh, you know chemicals right our india's industrial, industrial processes are they really you know human friendly environment friendly hmm? and then the waste disposal are we doing in the right way right if you go to uh, industrial countries you can see they are having of course they are you know lot of industries but they manage their pollution levels they manage their 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 water level purity of the water right so therefore we need to learn and do things in this area as well otherwise we are having lot of other problems associated with this pollution you know uh, traffic of course uh, we burn more oil pollute the atmosphere we drain our treasury to get those things you know from outside we don't have it right and therefore now if you remember last budget we try hard to put something go for electric vehicles reduce air pollution right then if one may think okay but still you are using uh, electricity generate to coal or something right but use solar energy use other form of energy renewable energy sources encourage them now we have put up something to the energy ministry now now if you look at uh, we must have seen newspaper australia is rich with coal and gas natural gas but they are going in a big way to encourage solar 
in that country right how they have a system they have already a system carbon tax system we also have that that you don't feel it but we have carbon tax already right that tax goes into a, into a, into a uh, uh, account kept there and with that they are providing free solar panels and charging systems to households in southern australia okay through that they they they, they are planning to go more renewables and even though they have coal and other things they are promoting that giving free right and here we have promoted you know the solar business solar sangram is there right but before that we have other things we had unfortunate thing anybody from cba or leco right i have put up something in my long ago maybe 2 3 years ago before that i generate more electricity than i use i give to the grid right i have accumulated or oh, maybe 5000 units or so now right i call this leco people whether they are sir you know payment that's why i ask leco people here right they are saying no what is it now parani out of the bank from from now onwards if you come and register we can pay right but right the people have to be encouraged hmm, to go in that direction at least give me some incentives right so we are we are pushing this through the government through the treasury to go in that direction at least tax concession should be given yeah heavy tax no when you doing that right the, the hopefully things will turn around right i'm going to talk to leco uh, and then the ministry i i tried but i couldn't uh, contact the right person okay right so uh, don't be discouraged of these things in this country right you know i as a environmental i did it i run my electric vehicle most of the time right so if possible to go in that direction we reduce the carbon footprint right all right okay now uh, globally uh, we are working with unf privacy i told about just before united nation framework convention on climate change we are part of that this was signed in rio 1992 uh, i was there at that time i have been in this system for some time how how long ago was that and to about over 20 years ago right okay right now we had rio plus 20 recently but rio plus 10 before that right so mainly what does this say the main aim of that we were, we are party to this from 1993 the stabilizing of greenhouse gases co- gas concentration on the atmosphere at a level that would prevent anthropogenic dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system so basically we are saying this this convention says that we need to uh, stabilize carbon dioxide or greenhouse concentration in the atmosphere uh without going into a dangerous situation that's the crunch of it okay so uh what we have done is we are trying hard to go in this process right now we are signed to that therefore we have to adhere to this then under that under that convention there is a protocol you all know that from a convention a protocol develops not protocol cannot be there without a convention right so the kyoto protocol came in 1997 right sad thing is that even japan is not part of this it's called kyoto protocol recently also i met some japanese people i said at least respect the the, the protocol that is name and the japanese city kyoto so done there so sri lanka has ratified it in 2002 and we are uh, part of that right so the main objective of this this protocol was that some of you know the industrialized countries because in 1990 we showed you the other culprits right they have take the lead role and they have do something with that intention this protocol was developed so the in, the thing is that they have to reduce at least 5% of their emission in respect to 1990 level in 1990 they have put up something at least reduce 5% of that right during 2008 2012 time period okay so this was signed at grid uh, but J- usa didn't sign right japan didn't sign right so the high important people didn't sign right and it's, it's not it's a failure actually 
this is a failure, didn't work. But after that what happened, we tried hard to extend this and finally we agreed, it goes up to 20, I think 18 or 20, right? But they are again, they are not supporting, these countries are not supporting, therefore it's a problem, internationally it's a problem, okay? So what are the, the options available for us? We can mitigate, if possible, that mitigate means you try to retain or reduce this variation, you mitigate, you try to reduce the temperature, rate, temperature rise or adapt, anyway it is happening, we try to live with it, adaptation is that, right, okay, so if you cannot do anything, we have to adapt now, I mean somebody is doing something, it is influencing us, but we cannot, you know, uh, do anything, then we have to live with it. So we have to see how we, our, we maybe our buildings have to be changed, uh, our way of, uh, uh, our, our, our way of life has to be changed, all that, right? So I put this, uh, prevention is better than cure. It goes with him with this. But this is from, from where you get this, prevention is better than cure. It's a, it's a, it's a phrase from somewhere, health sector. Health sector always say, I don't know whether it is, is being done here, practice here, but this saying is for health. Because it is, if you can prevent a disease, right, once you get the disease and cure is a different thing, no? So prevention is better than cure, that's how it comes. So I say mitigation is better than adaptation. And this, a parable, right? Okay. Now I will tell you a story prevention is better than cure. Now, for example, not here, in developed countries, for example, USA, they have a health, health insurance system, right? Anybody who was there, must say, I, I lived there for 10 years, I know that. So, uh, what do they do? They don't have this pre, pre uh, you know, health care like here, but they are better off. How? From the employer or, you know, from where everybody has to be insured. Health insurance has to be there. Otherwise, you cannot go to the hospital. Right? Even Australia is the same thing. But in Australia, government covers you. Uh, in USA, you don't cover by government. So you have to buy insurance. Right? But what the insurance company do, they at least in six months, every six months or so, with their expenses, you are sent for a medical check. Full medical check. As you grow older, frequent medical check. Free. Right? From the insurance company. Why? Because they know early detection will prevent it, no, can, can cure that problem. But if you let it go, you get sick, you will be hospitalized, surgery, various other things, then the insurance has to pay. So they are doing a business, right? They want to prevent. So they, they try to you know, send you to the you know, check, 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 right? Keep you healthy. If you get sick, they are losing, right? So it's benefiting both sides, right? So that's, that's something that they do, genuinely they do, right? So in this country, what is happening? We have free medical, and you get free medical uh, uh, benefits? I don't, <laughs> because uh, no point going there, because then uh, yesterday also I saw parliament, people are talking about it, right? It's free, but nothing there. You have, they will give you a check, you have to buy outside, right? Medicine and other things, you have to do your uh, checking from outside. So for the sake of saying free is not good, right but do something good so this you know i went out of the topic now right why well, it's related of course health is related pollution various other things lead to the dengue and various other things right and therefore it's health right the health ministry putting so much money into curing they are they should put more money into prevention if, like this check you know forcefully check the people you know, before they get sick Right? That will be more beneficial than cure or the treating somebody when he's sick. Right? It's costly. Okay? Right. Okay, mitigation is what I told you. I don't have to read this. Mitigation means actually you uh, reduce emission, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. That will mitigate, that will reduce temperature rise. That's mitigation, right? Uh, so, uh, proper definitions are there. This is definition actually. Mitigation implementing policies to reduce GHG emissions and enhancing 
What do you mean by enhancing? That means uh, ways to absorb or take carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, collect them and store. Trees, for example, do it that. Trees are sink. Right? So reduce emission, increase sink. That's mitigation. Okay? Right. Then clean development mechanism. Now under the Kyoto Protocol, this is there, CDM, right? It's also considered as North-South collaboration, right? Now, we are a low greenhouse gas emitting country, you can see, I showed you, right? Per capita emissions point, point something, right? So, we are, even though under Kyoto Protocol, we are not bound, we are, we are part of that, but we are not, uh, you know, it is not necessary, we are legally not bound to reduce, right? But, but as much as possible, if you can reduce, it's good for the whole world, right? So therefore, there can be projects that is you know beneficial to us. Say, for example, uh, you know burning fossil fuel to generate electricity instead we go for renewables is beneficial to us. You know? Economically also benefited, environmentally benefited, health wise also benefited, right? And under the protocol, there is a clause that if the situation like this, the developed world should help financially and otherwise technically. They have here under the Kyoto Protocol, right? Okay, so uh, there are CM, uh, CDM projects, clean development mechanism projects in this country, in Sri Lanka. We are looking in these areas hydro power generation, wind power generation, solar generation, organic waste, right? Uh, go into organic waste, right? And reduce uh, methane emission, of course, forestry, improve forestry, biomass, you increase and use it for energy, for example, right? Biogas, okay, produce biogas, and of course in other areas. Wherever possible that you reduce emission of all greenhouse gases, then it can be a project, a CDM project. Okay, right. Okay, then we, we also talk about sustainable development, right? You have heard about it because we want to develop, but not like the, the countries that develop the industrial country develop in a different way. They are also now turning back. Okay? They cannot retain that. Sustainability is necessary. So we talk about sustainable development. Okay? For us also sustainability is a must. Right? Development that means the need of today without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. That's that's what is sustainable development. Okay? Uh, I have to go quick. Right? Now no survival without sustainability. That's that's the thing that I want to stress here. So sustainable development includes three independent components. These three economic issues. We economically we have to develop, go up in the economic ladder, but social issue has to be considered, and we have to consider environmental issues. Right? Just you know, neglecting environment, having development or economic development only is not sustainable development, it's not the right way to go. That's the basic idea here. And now, of course, uh, we must have seen, President put up a committee and I was also there. We, we gave him two days ago, we submitted our report and hopefully this is the achieving sustainable goals in 2030. It came on TV also. We handed over the report to President. Right? So we are trying to implement that in time to come. President will take initiatives. Okay. Right. Now, now if we are talking about Paris Agreement, right? We are party to that. We are we are here to you know we have to agree, we have to do things. Now there, if you, now the basically it says we should not let the temperature rise go beyond two degrees. Paris Agreement says this, right? If you want to stay there. The world must reduce emission by 50% by 2050 and with a peak around 2020. Peak means now emission is increasing, no? you have to come down, right? You cannot go like this. So the, after peaking, peak should not go further, peak then you have to go down. That's what this says, right? <coughs> you want to retain that to uh, limit the uh, rise to two, right? Annex one countries, those are developed countries like industrial countries, right? 30% emission, they have cut 30% of their emission by 2050 with peak around 12 or 15 and at least 80% cut by 2050. 
yeah emission has to cut down if, if you want two degree rise not go beyond two degree right developing country like ours have to cut 20 percent against 1990 level by 2050 not difficult we can do it but they are the others have to do it right so that's that's the the requirement okay then the paris agreement of course you know now this agreement is enhanced the implementation of UNFCCC, United Nations Framework on Climate Change, aims to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change in the context of sustainable development and efforts to eradicate poverty. So, in the Paris Agreement itself, the poverty elevation is there, right? Through sustainable development is there. So, that is the path we need to take, okay? So, as party, to the agreement, we also have to go in that direction. Okay. Then, measures to measures in the ag uh, agreement include greenhouse gas emission as soon as possible you have to reduce, and uh, source and sinks sinks has to be increased, source has to be reduced uh, in the second half of the century. And this is the other thing. This clause is there to keep global temperature increase well below 2 degree and to pursue efforts to limit it to 1.5 degree. This is what I was telling you. This clause is there in, in, in the black and white, but how, the, how to achieve this? I told you if you are going to have 2 degree maximum, how much the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere should be? Not about 450 parts per million. If you want to be at 1.5, should be 350 parts per million. So, we have to strive to get there, right? All right. So, um, also they say every five years we have to review, right? And they have they have uh, pledged, internationally pledged, hundred billion dollars a year in climate finance for developing countries by 2020, hmm? with a uh, commitment for further increase in the future. This is in the agreement itself, right? Okay, but uh, how it will. So, we have Rio 1992, Rio plus 10 in South Africa 2012, then we had uh, 2002, then we had Rio plus 20 in 2012, right. We go went back to Rio again, right. Now, there, there is some uh, a document came up, the future we want, that is the document that was there in 20, Rio plus 20, right. They have, it, it has led to this, 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 uh, meeting has led to 17 SDG and 169 target, okay. 17 SDG goals, sustainable development goals are there, right, in various fields, various sectors, right. They are action oriented, global in nature and universally applicable. Indicators focus on measurable outcomes, I integrate economic, social and environmental aspect and recognize their interlinkages. So three things that I told you before, they are linked together, they are the targeted in the SDG as well, okay. So these are the 17 SDG goals, I am not going to go into it, this has many things, education, poverty, health, hmm, energy, climate change, water, right, uh, then uh, life on land, fees, hmm, then industry, jobs, many other things are there, right. These are the 17 goals agreed under SDG, sustainability goals. Eh? We also have, you can identify, 13 is climate change, for example, um, 6, water, 7 is energy, right, and first is of course poverty elevation. Education is also there, so these are the ones that are in there. If you go through and if you achieve these things, then you are a prosperous nation, prosperous world, right? So we need to look at it. So something wrong in the uh, anyway. So as I said before, for sustainability, you have to consider social aspects, environmental aspects, and the economic aspects. Those three pillars has to be considered if you want the sustainability, okay. That is what it says, right. Not only economic development, okay. 
sustainability comes with all three together. Okay? Then only the sustainability can be done. Okay? This 17, if you divide into various sectors, we have, can have consider 4 out of 17, 4 talks about biosphere, 8 about society. Society part is high. Then again, economy is 4. So, biosphere, the biosphere can be considered as environment, right? Society, social aspects, then the economy. 4, 8, 4, 16, and all together 17, combining, connecting all this. This is how it is divided. Okay? So, we can look at each and every. You, these are available at literature, you can see. Hmm? All right. So, in this country, system and governing uh, convergence planning, we have 17 equals 169 targets. In this country, we have I do not know, I will have to change this. 50, how many ministries we have? 51 ministries, I thought, right? And then 425 line agencies, like departments, corporations, various other things. Because this is this is a wholesome picture that we have to look at. If you want to implement these things, not one ministry can do it, right? Everybody has to come together, right? All line ministries, line agency. Then in government in Sri Lanka, government system in Sri Lanka, we have the central government, then we have nine provincial councils, right? Then 335 local authorities, that include 23 municipal councils, 41 urban councils, 271 divisional councils. Now, we have increased the members, two to three fold now in these areas, right? Recent elections, right? We increase the representative two or three fold. They are facing a problem now. Twenty five percent women is not there, so they cannot declare it, right? The commission commission is in great trouble now. What to do? Right? Women are not coming forward, only ten percent there. Twenty five percent needed, only ten has come. Right? Why all even here is representative very very small now. Right? No more, more engineers, right? All right, right. So anyway, th these are problems, right? So, so these, we have to work with this system in order to achieve this, right? Okay. I'm not talking politics, right? But the real problem. Now, now we talk about standard living. How much time we have? We have 10, 15 minutes, right? Okay. Uh, we talk about standard living. Development means whether it's sustainable or unsustainable. We need a better living standard now. So we talk development with that now, right? So. So, look at the standard of living. Standard of living and quality of life is determined by the quality of the environment we live in and not by our consumption. You agree with this statement? Hmm? Good life, standard life, quality of life has to be improved. That is development, right? So, environment we live in is the main thing, hmm? right? Whether you have a lot of money, you are in a filthy place, it's no use now, right? That's that's the main thing. Right. Is this the consumption that you prefer? Right? I just put this, you know, maybe none of you will be consuming this way, right? Okay? So over consumption is not so good, right? Okay? Right. So quality of life, when you talk about quality of life, right? Maybe you think this is the quality of life. You have more money, good quality of life, right? Material, you have cars, good houses, right? More power, in the sense, this power plus other powers, right? Power and power, right? Then more friends, we have friends, they have been enemies also, right? Living in restricted diet plan, many, many, many of the rich people are under this condition, right? If you consume, and then you are under diet plan, right? You have to control your weight, right? Then go through medical examination because you are always thinking whether I get something. So you are, you are regularly checking, right? Blood check, this check, you know, living in a degraded environment. Is this quality of life, you think? Maybe many of the people are think this is the quality of life, right? Or something like this hmm? fresh air, drink fresh water, hmm? having good education having good health, having comfort and convenience, having a circle of good genuine friends, right? living in a 
caring environment, having a peaceful sleep. Just compare the things. Now here you don't have, you know, luxury cars, luxury houses, but then the, if you have this, is it not the quality that you are, you, you are looking for? Right? It all depends on the, the you, way you think, right? Okay. So, if you want to be environment friendly, if you want to go towards sustainable development, you may have to think in these lines also. Okay. All right. Then the resource comes. Now, we the problem is that ecology footprint is very high in the developing world. Uh, it overshoots clearly indicate that the present population is consuming more than what the earth can provide. This is the basic problem, right? You you consume more than there, right? So that leads to resource depletion, right? Degradation of land, uh, environment is degraded. Uh, you know, and quality of life lead to huge anomalies. Quality of life, more different societies, right? Threatening the survival of future generation. These are problems due to over exploitation of natural resources, over exploitation of our natural resources. Consumption is beyond the, the sustainable level. Over consumption, right? It's a problem. Huh? So therefore, not only us, the world is on a destruction path through human activity causing rapid depletion of resource depletion and heavy environment pollution, which has exceeded earth threshold capacity. Hmm? This is the problem. This is the main problem. Okay. Right. So solution for future survival to meet the total resource consumption by growing population in 2050, we need more planets, habitable earths, right? Is is like four times now, four to, four to ten times by 2100. So I can give you a picture, but these are things now like this. Resources that are in the atmosphere, I mean in this world, is not sufficient. You have to move move in that say by 2 to 100 we have to have four times this at least right at the present day but times it increases no it can go up to more right so can we do this or we look back and think how we live how we do our business right okay so consumption and production uh, is the main thing see this so the sustainable development talk about consumption and production right uh, so, if you can achieve sustainable consumption and production, then we may be able to go into sustainable development and live uh, for the future generation as well, right? So, uh, we have to decouple, resource decoupling is achieved through reduction in resource intensity, recovery and resource, recovery of resources, not throwing away, right? Redesign our product systems. Reduce consumption. In other words, uh, uh, you know, overconsumption has to be reduced. Right? Uh, I am going to go quickly. Many of the things I will skip, maybe. So, different ap approaches are there. Strategic towards sustainable development. So, these are the things that we need to think of: waste minimization, pollution prevention, clean production, eco-friendly, eco-efficient systems resource sustainably close in the loop. In other words, we cannot throw away. You have to have a linear uh, economy has to be changed into a circular economy, right? In the production sector as well, right? That's that's the basic way of uh, going towards sustainable development, right? I have so many slides to show you, but then I will skip some of these things, right? Sustainable production, that means sustainable production is resource efficient and cleaner products. That's sustainable. Resource efficient and cleaner production will be sustainable. Okay, right. This is what I am saying. See, you put in your energy, water, and the resource material, and you produce something, and there you get the finished products. But many of the other things go waste, like solid waste, waste water, all that goes up. We we'll have to, at least if we can prevent, we we'll have to reduce that and increase the production. So redesign, redesign your system. AI emission, 
you put in pollute there pollute the water and pollute the soil we need to reduce that and use maximum benefit of the resources that are available for useful thing right another way of, you know it is intelligent consumption said the way the emotional consumption emotional consumption meaning right see people advertise McDonald's pizza this and this junk food also advertise right so emotionally you go towards that youngsters are brought in there giving other things like things this party and this and that you know toys right you 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 bring them then you train them then you go in that direction right so that has to be changed okay i am not talking against any of these institutes but in general speaking this is what's happening okay we'll have to change that basically this right we were you consume about 3 kilograms per day it went up to about 11 kilograms up to 44 kilograms so we went from hunter uh, agrarian then industrial society i am not saying that we go back in this path but use our brains to have the 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 comfort and other things but do it in a different way not the the, the linear way that's all i am saying right not this right so human kind garbage kind right this is a, actually a cartoon i had right the birth of garbage kind instead of human kind right so this has to be changed if you want to be sustainable there's no resource to throw away like this basically that right so basically uh, saying that you have a process say see you you produce something right transport and consume and throw away this is not circular right take something use and throw major part but if you go in this direction you can uh, develop in future future generation will be at a loss right it is not sustainable at all it is not sustainable at all okay one way process right but instead if you can just do a little you know, this is putting it some of these going waste thing into the system right and much better will be this if you can totally recycle you know, without wasting without throwing anything will be the ideal situation okay process ideal process okay natural now we have nat we are talking about natural resources what are the natural resources available to us in this country now nsf national science foundation we put up a publication that we have enough resources in this country minerals water air plenty of what we have actually even though we, we have shortage management is a problem right air marine resources <coughs> biodiversity forestry wildlife then we have environment planning if you have all this we should be able to live in a sustainable manner for generations to come okay this is resource right resource i think some of them things our economy is brown not green at all right we are polluting our surrounding air yeah, land water all are polluting right that we are i've been talking about this charge of water to rivers right some of the you know you think now the vegetable cultivators you know they they put even before harvesting they spray right but for them they think uh, i will take something for my consumption without putting that but then in a round world in a chain way they also get it right you cannot just avoid if you are in that system you cannot be away even you try to be away right uh, so i hope you understand what i am saying right okay now uh, this is also something that you have to think right karl marx said this huh? pollution is a cost but it is a class cost okay why is it true it is true actually now this three bullet if you read locations of garbage dumps always we are the poor lives rich people will not allow it to dump there you dump in a place where mostly 
poor people out there. They cannot, they are, they are, they are not powerful enough, powerless, right? Location of industrial zones damages uh, the productive rural landscapes. You go and put up something in a forest area or some, some valuable area, really, environmentally and economically valuable area has been picked for this, right? Then, the, <laughs> this is a good example. We are talking about, uh, you know, the eastern north inside CKDU, kidney problem, right? Still doing research, this and that, if people are going, how many you see? 10,000 in the, so 9,000 9, is in the, they have bought the one way ticket, no return. Okay? 100,000 is in the treating, you know, the, the, the uh, what? Treating, uh, uh, blood transmission is taking place over 100, 10,000. Okay? So now we're saying, if this happened here in you know Columbus also quickly they'll find a solution. They you know lethargic this way, you know, doing safe. At least this will happen. This is not in Sri Lanka only. You, you country wise. If this happened in USA they will put their you know whole heads together and find a solution. Develop well. Developing countries happens, nothing happens. This is the problem. That so the technology, monetary know how, you know, uh, financial, everything there. This is happening in the country and the world. Okay, so that has to be, you know, looked into. Okay, so these are some of the things I am putting. Deteriorating our own survival requirements now natural capital depletion. Okay, reducing the the genetic diversity. In other words, of, of agriculture in the area, killing. Pollute, uh, pollu uh, pollinating agents, right? Because of pesticide and uh, insecticide, killing soils because of inorganic fertilizer. You know, soil is not fertile at all. It's sort of, you know, no agriculture, you know, now it's agriculture business, agribusiness, right? So these are problems because good old days, there were networks, people worked together, and then uh, agriculture, it was agriculture, culture. Agriculture, not agri business. Now it's a business. Business may be good, but we have to think of our culture as well, right? That's the basic thing I'm telling you. Now, traditional means of pest control is no longer there. Okay. Avoid, uh, you know, this I have said, I don't want to go into these things, but you know, I can talk of these things for a long time, but then, you know, these are things that uh, maybe you will get these things from other places also. I don't have to tell you. If you are keen enough, you will read the books and you know get this. Now we go, we have to go in this direction. Maybe biogas is plenty of resources in this country, but we have to push in that direction. Biogas can be used as well. Now, for example, some countries, you know, uh, main uh, main uh, energy for driving transport is this biogas okay then eco designing we we can have environment designs you know not plastic but see algae based plastics like you know that means you know these can be uh, you know reused or some of the things actually are edible some of the tools are edible okay this is something zero detergent washing hmm? we don't use detergent use the ultrasonic waves in this so these there are uh, washing machines like this ultrasonic cloth washer okay and uh, copier there are now see we have a paper you you know you throw away but uh, there are machines now ways to decopy in other words remove the toner from which reuse it. remove the toner Reuse it. They are called decoping. They are there. Okay. Environment has to be considered as part of you know your life. You are part of the environment, right? That way. Now these are um, for engineers has to take into consideration. Now we, from the environment we learn things. Now there are buildings in Japan and other countries. They look at these things and design your your house this way. Now ant hill. 
studying that the ventilation is there, light is there, so you built uh, houses like that. Now this is a you know example of that. So you don't have to have air conditioning and uh, artificial lightning, uh, lighting and many things can be involved. So they are, even in this country we have now environment friendly architecture, no? buildings are built this way, right? So we need to improve on that, right? Now, uh, since times are, what is called now, under the Paris Agreement, we have to do something called national determined contributions. We have to produce and we have given some things in these areas. So these are details actually. Uh, I will just rush. So for this, developed countries are supposed to provide us support financially to mitigate and adapt to the climate change. So we have uh, got into, we have given our national development contributions to the secretariat, right? Uh, these are the areas, human health, food security, water, irrigation, coastal and marine sector, biodiversity, urban city planning and human settlement, tourism protection. These are uh, what we have put as our national determined contributions to overcome the climate change. So, if the financial support is coming, we can go ahead and do this type of project in the country, right? Uh, I'm going to uh, skip these things. Okay, maybe this is something that I will. Now, generally, as the your, your income goes up, your consumption goes up. That's natural thing, right? right? So, it is like this. But here, what you see is now as your meat consumption goes up, you eat more meat with with uh, when you have more money, right? Maybe that's a normal thing, right? Uh, is it the right thing to do? So it's going up like this. More development, more meat, right? But some of the countries are doing like this. More money, but you don't eat that much meat, right? Still, you are in an accelerated developing human society, right? So, demand for resources, the food increasing, but you can go in different directions, right? All right. Now, this is something food for thought, right? Now, this is something the, the water consumption or the need of water to produce one kilogram of food, right? Liter of water required to produce one kilogram of food different type potato wheat uh, you know maize rice or all that chicken and beef this is the amount of water needed right beef has the highest okay the rice we are using maybe 1990 right energy required for producing this right energy corn beef at the end two extremes right chicken other things are also there so beef is the most water consum consuming and energy consuming product, right? I can give you details if you want how why it is like that. So I'm I've been placing this: go from linear economy to circular economy, reduce waste, right, and recycle. You know, close the loop. That's the way we need to go, right? So, and I am going to close here, right? So I hope you got the basic information I wanted to give you. I'm leaving. That's why I, I try to close because I don't want to be talking when nobody is here. Right? Okay. So basically, my message I think is this: sustainable development is our goal in this country. We need to go in that direction. Uh, in order to overcome climate change influence on our society, as a country, we have enough resources to go in that direction. Think of uh, reducing overconsumption and planning. Water management is a very important thing that I was trying to say. Management of water that we are getting, that is in highest priority in our situation now. We are working on that. Your input is necessary on that. And if you go in that direction, with our resources, in this, this beautiful country can be a, a place to live without rushing to. Australia or UK or Canada uh, uh, or Scandinavian countries. That's my final word. Because many of our youngsters, educated, free educated, they are moving away. But, you know, if you are living here and do your job and, you know, 
wholeheartedly contribute. Hopefully, we can come up from this miserable situation up through sustainable development. Thank you.